guys and welcome back to Creative Pet Keeping. Today is water test day and I'm going to be testing the water parameters on my 20 gallon long tank to see if that tank is fully cycled for sure. I do have some endlers in there already and I did move a filter media from a previous tank in there so in theory it should be fully cycled and ready to go but it's always good to check and I don't want to overload the tank so I wanted to check and then Add, start, slowly start adding some of the female bettas to the tank. So this is the um, API freshwater test kit. There are also test strips available, but from everywhere that I've heard and spoken to uh, other aquarium hobbyists, these are the more accurate tests. The test strips are not as accurate, so it's better to just pay a little more money and get this, and this will last you for forever. So this is the, the current one I have is the API Freshwater Master Test Kit. It comes with an instruction booklet that you don't want to lose uh, for a few reasons. Um, first of all, it's, it goes over all the instructions, which everything is a little different uh, than what you test for. So you want to check what they say, but it also um, explains why you should test uh, all the different water parameters and my camera is not focusing very well and also gives you recommended uh, pH levels for certain types of fish so this is really useful if you're very new and are not really sure what you're testing for and why this will explain everything and then also it has back here a space where you can write down all your different results of the different tests so you can keep track and see how things are changing in your tank I actually like to have my own little notebook I got a new one it's my little one tigris notebook so I already started writing in here the next thing you have is this little card and it will tell you the pH high range pH ammonia nitrite and nitrate levels and you can compare the colors to give you an idea of what the levels of each things that you're testing for are don't worry if these colors don't exactly match your bottle. Uh, they're not 100% exact. They're very close. So you're going to be kind of guesstimating a little bit on this. And then here are the actual bottles of the solution. I paired them together because the uh, nitrate has two bottles. And each bottle will tell you which one you put in first. So hold on if it decides to focus. There we go. Bottle one at 10 drops. So, so, you know, it gives you the basic information. Then we have the um, nitrite uh, solution that is only in one bottle. Then we have two bottles for pH. You test first the low range pH. And if your color is right about here, that means, means you should test for high range pH. That means it's it's at its limit of what it could test for. So then you test this one and it should tell you roughly where your pH is. Or if your pH is somewhere around here, that means you don't have to test for the high range. But both are provided. And then we have the ammonia uh, solution as well. It comes in two bottles as well. Now keep in mind that on the back of the bottles, it tells you uh, warnings for certain solutions some don't have any like this one does it's corrosive so you don't want to touch the actual solution with your skin so be sure to be careful be cautious if you're really really clumsy you could wear uh, plastic gloves while you're doing your water tests I don't I, I just try to make sure to be careful and then you get these little uh, beakers this one's not filled all the way in you put your aquarium water into those you want the water to be up to the five milliliter line but you want it to be the edges to be a little over the five milliliter line and then the bottom because the water see curves in here when it's inside let me try to show you when it lays it's not really completely flat it curves so it's hard to show I've seen a few other youtubers kind of show this a little better um, solid gold on YouTube um, filmed it way better than me in this case but you want the bottom part to be touching the milliliter five milliliter mark and you want the edges to stick up just a little tiny bit over it and try your best not to contaminate um, the different water samples if you're gonna dip your um, flask in the, t the tank make sure to afterwards when you're done really wash it really well and then dry it some people also recommend um, using pipettes 
and have a pipette for every single tank individually and then use the pipettes to put the water in. That would be a lot easier. I'm actually going to order some pipettes on Amazon because it'll be a lot easier to fill this up that way. And then you also have these little caps that um, you could put on top of your test tubes. Those are not completely secure. So do be careful, um, especially when you're testing for the ammonia because that is a little corrosive. Um, you might want to use a tissue paper or a towel to put over this while you shake. Certain ones you just have to just move around, other ones you have to shake. The ones that you do have to shake, just be careful and take precautions. So I'm going to test for the uh, ammonia right now. So I have my two ammonia bottles. Bottle number one and bottle number two. I also have um, a piece of tissue so I can cover uh, this little uh, test tube. So what I'm going to do is add uh, eight drops of this in here and then I'm going to add eight drops of this and then I got to cap it and shake it very vigorously for five seconds. And then I gotta set it aside for five minutes and then I could check my results. Now, when you pour these drops, you want to have the bottle like this, completely vertical, not like this at an angle, because what this does is, if you do it at an angle, some of these drops may be smaller, some may be larger. If you do it like this, all the drops will come out at the same size and this will guarantee uh, more accurate results because if you you know change a little some of the little things or don't do it accurately And you have different amounts of solution going into your test. You're gonna get inconsistent results I recommend if you're not sure uh, Testing for the same thing twice or three times and to see what kind of results you have if you're doing it correctly You're gonna have the same result um, every time if you have different results from the same test, from the same water, same aquarium, then you're doing something wrong now. I need to put the camera down so I can add in some of, so I can open this up. Maybe I'll film putting the first uh, eight drops in. Let's see. Okay, so I have it like this. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight. Okay, now I'm gonna do the next one. Okay, so I put the eight drops of the other solution in. I'm holding this um, closed and kind of holding it tight. And I gotta shake it for five seconds. Maybe a little extra. There we go, okay. Now that it has been shaken, you leave it aside and check back in five minutes. While the ammonia test is hanging out over here, I actually already did the um, pH tests, just to kind of show you how it turns out. So I first did the low range pH. I'm gonna set it right here if it wants to cooperate. There we go. So I did the low range pH, and as you can see, it's actually a very dark blue so I know it's 7.5 or more. So just to check, I did the um, high range pH. It actually turned out, oh, bananas here to help. Turns out to be about 8.2. So in this case, um, you could ignore the low range. It turns out that it is the uh, high range pH. Now my pH is a little too high for me, for at least for bettas and endlers. I mean, they could have up to eight. 8.2 is a little more than I would like. So I'm definitely gonna need to consider adding some sort of buffer, pH buffer, to kind of lower my pH just a little bit. For comparison, I'm gonna do a test right now on my tap water and show you how, uh, for that one, I don't really need the high pH range because my tap water is more neutral. So let me get some tap water for you guys. So as you can see, here I um, took my tap water right out of the tap and put the low range pH solution in. And then right away, and by the way, all I did was just swoosh it like this twice. You don't really have to shake it. And then you could test right away. And as you can see, it's somewhere between 
7 and 7.2. It's kind of hard to tell, and I told you you're going to be guesstimating a lot. But that's what it looks like. Um, hmm. Yeah, it's a little easier. If you have a white um, surface, you could tell. And then for comparison, this was my 20-gallon um, long. And look how dark this was, which gave me an indicator that I should use the high range pH test which is right here and then check and then this one this color fits this one pretty close and then this color as you can see is even darker than this can show so it's kind of an interesting example of when you know that you just need to use this one in this case for my tap water it's this and then when you need to do a high range pH. Okay, so now that it's time to test, uh, check the, move this out of the way, the ammonia test. There we go. It's kind of hard to really tell. In person, it looks like zero, but it has a tiny, tiny bit of green tint to it, depending how you look at it. So, could be point one, maybe, or it could be zero. It kind of looks like zero to me. Mm. See, on the camera when I'm looking at it, it looks like it could be point two five, but in person it looks like it could be zero. So I would say that this tank is pretty much cycled for the most part. It's doing well. It's handling the bio load of the endlers that I have in there. And, but I still need to find out what the nitrate and the nitrite is. So that will be kind of the next thing to test. But I'm kind of happy with what this color is, even though it's really hard to tell on the camera it really looks like it would be this one but on in when I'm looking at it with my eyes in real life it looks like it's zero so I'm gonna say zero that's what that's what I'm pretty much going to assume and now I'm gonna test for nitrate and nitrite but because I've already used up these bottles I need to empty them rinse them um, and then put some new tank water in there so I still have my ammonia right here my test my ammonia test I'll just put it right here I guess I just did the um, nitrate right here so I shook it up and just thought I gotta set it now it's time for, I mean the nitrite sorry now it's time for the nitrate nitrate is really weird you gotta put 10 bot 10 drops into the um, test tube and then you gotta close it and then you gotta flip it a few times to mix it and then you have to shake the test nitrate test solution bottle for 30 seconds. So this is the test bottle number two. For 30 seconds, you gotta shake this bottle like crazy for 30 seconds before you add it into the solution. And then you add the 10 drops. And then you have to shake this, um the uh, test tube with all the solution in there for uh, one minute and then you gotta wait for five minutes so this one is the weird one and the weird exception oh, let me adjust my camera I just was finished shaking this for a minute and look at this look at see how the stained the um, handkerchief is yeah because this stuff leaks it's the top of the cap so luckily the um, Nit nitrite, no, not yeah, nitrate test. Sorry, this is nitrate. Um, luckily, this one's not corrosive, but you know, now because nitrate and ammonia have similar colors, I have my ammonia test right here, so we don't get those confused. Now, we just gotta set these for five minutes and leave them alone, and then I could come back and check it out. So, it's time to test and see what's the results are this is nitrate and we've got zero which is awesome and then this is the nitrate test and it looks like um, somewhere between zero and 
five, maybe it's like one. When I'm looking at it myself, it's definitely not um, completely zero, but it's lighter than uh, the five ppm. I don't know how it looks on the camera for you guys, so I'm guessing it's probably like maybe two, one or two ppm, which is really good. I'm pretty happy with that so far. So yeah, there's that, and then here is the ammonia test again. So these are the three colors, as you can see. And that kind of concludes testing my aquarium my 20 gallon long tank i still have to do tests on all the other tanks but i kind of wanted to show you what it looks like and i'm gonna have to write down all the uh results right here i hope that this encourages you to test your tanks as well as bowls um beta bowls should be tested as well um before you do your um water change and then after just so you can see how things change uh, if you do water changes in your bowl every day that would be advised if you wait a day or two I would check I would do an experiment where you test the water every day between the new water change and then the next one just to kind of see what's happening in your tank to your tank water is your ammonia spiking are the are well you won't really have nitrates and nitrites if you have no filter so you got to really focus on the ammonia for the most part but do the water test kind of check what's going on in your tank see what's going on with your ph and i kind of hope that this video helped you guys and encouraged you to want to try it out if you like this video be sure to give it a thumbs up thumbs up really help in the comments down below let me know if you've ever tried this kind of liquid test or have you ever tried any other test and do you even test your aquarium at all i'd be curious to know if you are new to this channel be sure to subscribe i have a lot of awesome beta care and pet care videos and i hope that you have an awesome day bye guys